paid by Wikipedia. But Wikipedia and Wikimedia don't have to pay Isidro Dantas, for example, anything for releasing his book because he has released that book for free. Whereas you know most people expect to be paid for everything. And which is natural, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that the whole idea of open access of knowledge is that okay, people want like there's always been this thing about JS Store and all that, right? That JS Store has so many scholarly articles from across the world, but it's a paid paywalled platform that you have to pay to just get access to the platform. To be able to read the article itself, uh, you have to pay for it. Because mostly everything is right now is hidden behind a paywall. Because and but uh, the whole licensing and the what we talk about is the open access of knowledge is about releasing information for free. So I mean the, with the amount of content that Rico and I have created on Wikipedia, we could have written books. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is we are putting it up on Wikipedia, people are reading it for free. And we are not making any money out of it at the end of the day, right? Which may not necessarily appeal to everyone. It's a whole different debate and I'm not going to go into that topic, obviously. It's, I'm not, both have pros and cons, but I'm just talking about us as editors that we are not earning anything from uh, the millions of views that, say, an article about TB Kunna or Goa Liberation Day is getting when we edit that article. Having said that, if you contribute, uh, you can also take part in conferences and things like yeah, that. Yeah, there are conferences. So, in which we, I mean, Wikipedia has a whole, it's not just a community of us in Goa. As of now, I'm, I mean, because I'm trying to encourage people, I'm only talking about the yeah. Goa community that we have. But Wikipedia and Wikimedia is a global community. It's not just a community in Goa or India. It's a global community, so they have a lot of, um, outside things that you can do, like in person also, to interact and you know, get like-minded people together. I think Rico has attended a couple Yeah, yeah, 3434, yeah. 3434, yeah. I was thinking that PR people hired by corporates, by institutions to put stuff on Wikipedia. So if you also look at that, or the Dali who wants to create a favorable impression about the mind or the runway, is that kind of thing happening as well? It is. Uh, it's called conflict of interest. Uh, technically, this whole talk is a conflict of interest because maybe say I know that the atheist whom uh, I talked about, I'm not supposed to edit their Wikipedia page because I know them in person because it's called as a conflict of interest. Then this is again a, it's a, again a conflict of interest if you are trying to, in your case, as you, what you described, basically me trying to. Uh, create or uh, edit a Wikipedia article related to my employer, which is again a, a conflict of interest, right? So Wikipedia actually has strict rules about conflict of interest, but you know because Goa is such a small place, uh, we usually write articles and you know create all this content about things that we are interested in, about people that we are interested in. Nico, for example, has. Uh, created article about people whom he has met, whom he has interviewed as part of his journalism. So, I mean, technically by Wikipedia's rules, we shouldn't be doing that. But, you know, in Goa, we are, as I said, we are still trying to build content and we are still trying to make it, you know, grow this volunteer effort. So we, even when we edit on Wikipedia, we try not to show our real world connection to the topic. Also, anything is possible, anything could be misused. So, like for example, supposing I say on the quiet that I charge you so much to edit an article or I can put you there at so, so much cost. That would obviously be wrongdoing. It goes up to the level of big corporates like Adani and all that who have actually been caught, you know, with their PR firms editing it and Wikipedia has come out with statements on it. Yes. They don't take to it very kindly, but let's admit it that in all cases it, it may not be detected, you know. But if you track, while, while the idea of an encyclopedia which can be edited by anyone looks a bit scary, looks quite scary, if you track the system which they use to get it working, it's quite, at one level it's quite amazing. There are flaws, as he was pointing out, there are flaws, but it's amazing because if, for example, you come and track my page, you know exactly whom I'm editing and what my biases are. Okay, whether I could be earning something from, from these guys, whether I could be on the PR role of someone, you know. 
So if I come suddenly and just start editing something on say uh, the new university which is causing a conflict in TV and I start supporting them throughout, it becomes pretty clear that this guy is up to something no good. But still, you know, there are ways to work through the system and it's shocking the way, you know, I noticed guys would come and delete something that I had written critical, which shows politicians in Goa in a critical light. They would delete it and they would give you excellent ex uh, reasons why they are deleting it. Like this is old, this is, this is you know, uh, we have uh, put it in the archive and you know, all technical reasons. So, so you know how it is. But then there is Rico's article, Rico is himself a Wikipedia celebrity. I think just before I entered, uh, people were talking about that, okay, uh, you become a celebrity. If you, I, I mean, today's world, everyone looks at a blue tick on your social media. But until, you know, even until uh, two, three years ago, if you had a Wikipedia article about yourself, you are a true celebrity. And Rico has an article about himself that, you know, it's very, it's not a lot edited. So, one day I decided to edit it. But as I said, that is technically I know him in real life. So by Wikipedia's policies, it is a conflict of interest. But I don't advertise on Wikipedia that I know him in real life so that I can update that article. So that is what we are trying to do in our group. That is only one side of the story. Yeah, the other side, side. It's the good the, side of the story. The other side of that same story is that I got the article was written somewhere in 2006 or 7 when anyone including their dog could get an article on Wikipedia. Subsequently, it became a victim of its own success and they became very choosy and blocking out stuff and all that. And then one fine day they said, uh, we are knocking out your article because you are non-notable. So I got a bit peeved. I said, bloody hell, like, you know, something about me which I cannot, I have no control over, okay? And I cannot edit my own article because it's an obvious conflict. conflict of interest. I cannot. So I went there and I voted. I said, please knock it out. And I said, a strong vote for knocking it out. Unfortunately, it just stayed on by one or two votes, like, you know, 10, 12 or something like that. So it stayed there. And till today, I cannot change it. I cannot update it. It is about 10 years behind my current interest. So, so there are problems. And probably I don't deserve to be there also, but I'm there because of technical reasons. So it says nothing in that sense. Yeah. It says nothing. But at the same time, they are defining you. Sorry? So no, they are defining they you. They have, because of all the AI, ML, blockchain trends in the past four or five years, the Wikipedia has come up with stricter guidelines over people who are related to these fields. So, yeah. How do you deal with poor liberation or poor colonialism? Those angles, because you've talked about war liberation. But I met a lot of people in war who don't talk about it as liberation. Plus, so your official article is right now also named as annexation of war with a redirect of liberation of war. Like, if you search for liberation of war, it redirects to an art, official article. Just, just for context, yeah. liberation of war is the propaganda. Legally, it's an annexation. <laughs> India argued that it is an annexation. Plus, yeah. there are Portuguese Wikipedians who have their own point of view on the subject. Yeah. yeah. So, it's really there tough. are many Portuguese Wikipedians, I mean, many Portuguese ones who will continue to be more. No, few, but they are active in Portugal. They have a full Portuguese Wikipedia, which, you know, has a different political view because they grew yeah. up, they yeah, grew up learning a different history. Yeah. 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 Do you also look at the so extended That's community? a different article. Yeah. That's on their page, on their but page. it could influence us. And sometimes we translate. They have excellent tools to translate, for example, from one to the other. Do you look at the extended Goan community also as part of this? We have, we have, we have tried. Uh, as I said, it's a volunteer effort. So it's always a work in progress. Once in a while, we realize that oh, this person is actually Goan. So then we try to edit the <coughs> on that. Have you developed any kind of a taxonomy kind of a thing, knowledge management, and then identify where your big gaps are? No, not to that extent. If you so, tag, if you tag? If you tag, yeah. So there is a... Um, I mean, it's a, that is a technical part that Nilantra has asked me not to stick to today. So maybe I can go over it at the end, maybe, at the very end. But uh, right now, go over the slightly no, less non-technical part. Uh, but I'll give a demo about how you can contribute. Uh, 
which is that way here, this is an article about Goa Revolution Day. As you can see, Goa Revolution Day did not have an article until 22nd August of this year. Uh, you are an edit mode? Or? No, it's not an edit mode. But uh, I just have extra tools on my computer. But I have. But, uh, I thought if you make an account on Wikipedia, you can enable all these extra things. So that is the technical part of it. And I did not want to talk to her. But yeah, uh, again, it's been uh, less, just a month, yeah, exactly a month since this article was created. But uh, this is the amount of content that we have for now. And uh, if you see, um, you know, every statement what I was saying, let's see, it was during the 1940s that the Goa liberation movement gained momentum. Um, inspired by the Indian independence movement. And at the end, if you see the resource number 4, uh, right? And if you click on four, source number 4, you can see it is okay. Gary Azavedo times up in the article that says, Fair account for Aswana Julia Minas. So, what I was talking about a principle of verifiability, right? That every single line on Wikipedia has a source attached to it at the end. So, we call this as an inline citation, which means that at the end of the line, you're supposed to add a source. And you know, if you look at some of the sources like Valmiki Falero's Guan 1961 book that I was talking about, if you see it mentioned in sorry, the laptop's a bit slow. It's mentioned in like A, B, C, D, which means mentioned in five different places. So if you see the these both these paragraphs are both ending in citation number five. So Wikipedia wants you to be that thorough. And as I said, why also I've already explained it. They want every single line to be verifiable. So, okay, in this case, I knew that this entire paragraph can be attributed to that, so I stuck to only this uh, at the very end of the paragraph instead of every line. But yeah, that's the amount of verifiability that is expected on Wikipedia. Because uh, of what we said, right, that Wikipedia is at this point has become an actual source of. Uh, you know, good content that people expect that level of quality from the English Wikipedia. Then, like, uh, this is a, obviously an article about Goa Revolution Day, then there is an article about TT Kunna. Um, so, why we had to use this photo is because stamp is easily under the correct licensing, but other photos of TT Kunna, they are not under the correct licensing, so we cannot use them. So more into that licensing and copyright part of thing. This is the only copyright free image available. And it's not even an image of him, right? It's a right. stamp of him. Um, but um, huh, if I open this, there's something called the Wikimedia Commons, which is what I was talking about, which is where you can contribute with photos. And again, it's very simple, but definitely if you have photos of your taken by you, please try to contribute to Wikimedia Commons. It's much easier to upload content on Wikimedia Commons because if it's your own photo, you own the copyright, right? So you don't have to you know, take all this mental effort that I was talking about during the whole uh, session about verifiability, original research, and all of that, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to worry about sources because you are the source of that photo. You can easily just put a photo on on a topic, and as Rico was saying, like you know, areas like Palola and all, they have very good photos because there are um, foreign tourists who are coming and taking photos, and then they put them on Wikimedia Commons. And then when say I am writing about Palola village, which I am not, but just say example, that I can maybe use those photos to make the article look nicer. Like here, see the Goa Revolution Day article because there is a photo of. Loya Maidan, sorry, the statue at Loya Maidan, the article, you know, adds a, it adds a little bit of more this than just, you know, a big wall of text. Uh, this is the villages of Goa thing that we were working on in the past few years. We have still not completed this, by the way, there's still definitely a lot of villages in Goa that are not covered. 
only Ponda and Bardes are complete. Only two. Ponda and Bardes are completed. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I was looking at village space. Uh, no, villages. Yeah, by the way, I was looking at this one. And for example, Kueli is not covered. You know, Tibi Kuna's father was from. So Kueli is not covered, for example. So hopefully we'll get down to that in the next couple of weeks. Kasavali, uh, I think there's an article I don't remember. But yeah, I was not able to find an article. But if you see, this is called a wiki link, which means if there is an article about it, we try to link it within Wikipedia. But yeah, uh, if you can see from this, was born uh, at his mother's village, which is Chandra. And that is uh, having an article of its own. Um, so these are some of the villages that we have covered in North Goa district. So, of course, a labor of love, as I call it, took us a long time to even get to this. But, uh, and yeah, until like five years ago, none of this was also clear. So, this is what we have achieved over time. Um, then, this is the Kokani Wikipedia. So, if you open, uh, you know, wikipedia.org, You can see that okay, these are all the languages that Wikipedia is available in. So if you open, click on English, you will notice that the uh, website's address begins with EN or Wikipedia. Whereas this one begins with GOM. GOM is going cheap opening, which is go and opening. So there are of course difficult different uh, uh, dialects available. And if I open the Sonia Shikshad page, Anik was Huh, yeah, so over here as you can see there are three different uh, tabs for this is a Romi Kokini, this is the Sonia Shushar article in Devnagri and uh, this is the Sonia Shushar article in the Kannada script. But they are all in, uh, I can't read Kannada script, so, but believe me this is in Kokini. So this is what I was talking about. We are, you know, all inclusive on our Kokini Wikipedia. Uh, we do not discriminate on whichever script you can write in, please do. And there were some other tools also that we were using. Now, of course, there, there is better tooling because of AI. Uh, but yeah, we were using. This is called as transliteration because it's the same language, different script. So it's called transliteration. But yeah, we were using some other external tools for transliteration. Konkan water? Konkan water, yeah. Or Konkan water. It's pretty good, no? Who's created Konkan water? Uh, Manglo group, Konkani group. And it's pretty good. Integrated with AI is what I heard, so it's better. I see. Now. And it can convert even, say, you get Malayalam script Konkani and you don't understand an alphabet of it. It would translate not only the script but also the dialect. So if it's in Romi, you, you get a kind of a bad daisy touch to it. It's a good, that's a good job. Devnagri to Romi, Romi to Devnagri. So technology is solving some of our problems, but the rest are human. So definitely, if AI and all those tools become grow, which we want them to, um, we want them to solve these kind of problems, you know, not take away our jobs. <laughs> but yeah, this is the kind of thing. We definitely have hopes from here. Is that the AI or is it just a mapping? What sounds like the sound? Sorry? Is it a simple mapping or is it actually an AI type? Konkan water began as a mapping, but as I said, it wasn't very accurate until very recently, and now it's more accurate because they have integrated it with the AI. World Konkani Center? World Konkani Center. They run Manglo. Manglo is their work. So no, no other language has as many as five. No other language. Sorry, Tirtanmay. Uh, I think no other language. That's what they say in the world has at the moment has five scripts to it. Has five scripts. Yeah. No other language. 
So it causes problems and challenges of its own. Um, if you want two minutes more, I can show you how I edit with you. Please, please. Yeah, okay. So, uh, right from taking, taking a login? Taking a login. No, I mean that you can do yourself. This one. Okay, I'll show you that. So create an account, uh, simple stuff, uh, username, password, re-enter the password and enter an email address, uh, with, again not required but if you lose your password this would help and then you can make an account, um, this is my account. my account. And, uh, this is my user page. I have tried to document some of the articles that I have written about. Uh, not all of it is Goa related definitely. Like I was trying to cover my account also. This is a user page which is a private This is a page of, of your page. Like I, which I have edited myself. Okay. Things Mark and Star article I have created myself. But you can yeah. put anything on this you page. Can put anything on it. So it's my own user page, but this is just like uh, why I'm showing you this, this is the kind of stuff that I, we can work on. Like then I want some award and recognition and okay. Yeah, this one was interesting. Like in my article, uh, I created it and she's a Sahitya Academy Award winner. So uh, people uh, across the world appreciated it. Hey, you know, you created an article about a woman writer. So that was nice of you. So they gave me uh, that. Do you have any unique businesses you have every day to your articles? Sorry, can you look up how many unique businesses you have every week to your articles? I, uh, not to all of my articles, but each one you can. So again, that's a bit of a technical part. But I can. There are stats in order to do that. Like, for example, Goa Revolution Day is open. The easiest way is always in. Uh, there's a view history column in which you can see who all had edited. And over here there is page statistics, page views, and if you open page views you can see who all evolution. It's a new article so I'm not expecting much. It's not even showing up on Google yet. Yeah. So in the last 20 days I think yeah, five people are saying. <laughs> but I think TV could have a lot more if I open. Yeah, so TB Kula right now is getting a 35-40 views per day. I think the article was named Tristam Raghavi Only because it's collaborative work, it becomes difficult to segregate. But maybe you could show your statistics of the pages you created over time and uh, things like that. Yeah. Um, contributions, under contributions. Everything is documented there, no? Here. So this is a full list of all Tanmay's uh, contributions. So this is, uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Then we can go to my contribution. Okay. Yeah, this is my contribution. These are all the contributions that he has made. And Beatrice Bragan, right, last night. Beatrice is uh, Louis, Louis, I'm not pronouncing it correct, so don't get me. But Louis Menezes Bragan was a daughter. There were, he had two freedom fighter daughters, so I was working on their article. But the Menezes Bragan, so yeah, that family, who were again related to TB Kuna, so it's all, they were all doing that together. Then you could get a breakup of which Wikipedia you contributed to by language, by time, by date, yeah. by hour, yeah. lot of statistics. Yeah, you can do all of that. So again, on uh, Kokini Wikipedia, if I go, then I have the same stuff, contributions over here, which are a lot, but yeah, only uh, 
and uh, cleaned up the road so that the farm would not be good on opening it. But you were showing us about editing, sir. Yeah, I was showing about editing. Uh, maybe I can talk about my editing process. So say, uh, I think the artic- example I took last time was that Kala Academy, uh, yeah, let's go to the Kala Academy article. Right? Let's start from there. Why create an article from scratch? Kala Academy go on. Uh, this is the Wikipedia article. Editing us, these are inside terms. As you can see, most of the stuff is forced already, so it's not, it's a decently written article, even though there's only um, two paragraphs about it. For example, I could um, say edit source. So for the more technical people, this is how Wikipedia looks like, but there's another easier way to do it called visual editing. So if you click on this, I can just write something and I can say fix this spelling mistake set and I can say there are edit summaries that I can use but I can say fix spelling of set as my edit summary so basically they are asking me to briefly describe what changes I made and I click on publish changes and that article is live. Now if any of you all want to go on your phone and open the Kala Academy Wikipedia article, it will look like a correct spelling. Yeah, you can do that right. But yeah, I mean, I mean if you are opening it for the first time, definitely it will show that. But uh, if, you're, uh, if you had opened it say today morning, it will take a, a couple of hours to refresh on your local phone. But uh, my typical Wikipedia editing process, for example, Kala Academy. Kala Academy. Um, what was that whole controversy right, about it? So I'll just say Kala Academy controversy on Google. Oh yeah, 18 July 2024, I have an article written about it. So this is a Times of India article written about it. 18 July. So I could maybe say, talk a little bit about it, right? Gala Rappan Man, a collective artist, paid tribute to the day, became one year since the tragic collapse of the open air auditorium, auditorium slab at Kala Academy. So I could maybe write uh, that in 2012, so I could maybe then, uh, so def- definitely do not copy paste what you see on a newspaper article. So I can basically write in 2020 the, the roof of the open air auditorium of the complex collapse. Full stop. I'll copy paste just the link. Then Wikipedia has an option here to cite, so it asks me to add a citation. Enter a link or a reference code to create a citation. I'll just paste this. And yeah, it came over here, right? Cry the beloved word. This is the article title, the verb, uh, the date. It basically picked up everything automatically from the newspaper version of the article. And I could Click on insert here, so now it's this is basically how the Wikipedia article looks like. Right? In case Tanmay went too fast because he's a techie and thinks everyone thinks like him, but what he's saying is that there are two ways to edit. There is a code like way where you can edit a code or there is a visual editor where you can you know what you see is what you get kind of thing. So this is like how you edit MS Word, yeah. right? So yeah. Writing on Microsoft Word, what you see is what you get. Like you edit and that is exactly how the printout of the article of your Sorry, not article. What you're writing on Microsoft Word, that is exactly how you look. He's not copy pasting, but he's uh, linking to some information which is already available with a proper sourcing there. So, what I, I just described the entire process in very fast, as I said, I think because I'm running short of time. But uh, basically, what I did is I googled about some information that I knew already, I found a source.